Hello everybody, it's Tommy and welcome back to another speed build for the Disney save. I am back from my little vacation. I went to Disney World. I will be talking about that a little bit later on in today's video because this is a bit of a longer speed build, but we are jumping right back into things. I was excited to kind of take this on because I knew it was going to be a little bit of a complicated build because we're working on such a small lot, but a colorful one and the theme is circus, which is one of my absolute absolute favorite things to create in The Sims. The Dumbo builds that I did back in Willow Creek are some of my favorite. They're just so colorful and I get to use balloons and glitter and streamers and things like that. We have the newer Party Essentials kit that came in really, really handy for this build in particular that I didn't have when I did those old builds in Willow Creek. So needless to say, I was happy to come home and have this be the first project that I was taking on because although it ends up being kind of a larger build when we go into the basement levels and end up doing, I think it's eight bedrooms. It was a really fun one and it's themed and I do love a good circus. So to kind of explain the basis of this build, this is the PT Fleas Circus. So this is the residential where all of the circus bugs live, the ladybug, the stick bug, the spider. We'll be going over all of that later on as well and showing off their individual themed bug bedrooms. This is essentially like a traveling circus. There are two main carts and presumably a lot of the time when they're traveling, the bugs would live in the two carts that PT Flea kind of carts around with these longer like centipede looking bugs but I wanted to do so much more than just cram these guys into these two little boxes that would have ended up as like a tiny home which I've already kind of done in this world. I wanted to create these like really fun bug themed bedrooms so I'm going to be doing kind of two parts here. There is the upper level which is the two train carts and kind of what you see in the film which is an area where they are at the time of the movie taking place and they have the train carts kind of parked and they've got this whole little setup with some of the dressing rooms and getting ready areas and kind of like where they're temporarily living. And then I decided I was going to dig down, if you will, into the lower levels of this build and create a basement level that houses most of the bedrooms so we could do some really fun theming downstairs and just have more space overall for this residential. Now, one of the big themes when it comes to Bugs Life is this idea that a lot of the objects being used or seen by the bugs are human items that are being repurposed into something that's a little bit more usable for the bugs. So the main carts on this traveling circus are actually Casey Jr. cookie boxes, which is kind of ironic because again, Dumbo and I did create the Casey Jr. train, but it's like kind of a meta lore, if you will, that they're mentioning Casey Jr. in the Bugs Life movie at all. But it meant that I got to create another version of like the similar Casey Jr. train, but it's not actually a train. It's more like carts and more like a traveling circus. They are on wheels. They are sort of carted around and they are meant to essentially look like giant cookie boxes. So I wanted to have some things on them without being able to use like actual wording and just being stuck with kind of the simlish looking text and wall pieces that we do have in the game. Like I can't literally write Casey Jr. on the side of these carts. Well, I guess I could have, but to me it would have looked a little bit funny with like the art style of the rest of the game. I was tasked with not only trying to recreate the carts themselves and use the right colors and play into the intricacy of the art on the boxes, use balloons, ribbons, and kind of create like the lavish textures and art that is used on them, but also to give little hints that they are just just giant boxes. So you'll see later on in the video, one of the things I did for the Casey Jr. boxes is make little barcodes and put them on the back so that you can tell that they are human objects. And the other items on the top lot here, which we'll be going through kind of like shortly, we have the tent to the right. And in the movie, there are some different characters that are using a tent that is made out of playing cards. So luckily I was able to find an object in game that we have that I can size up and kind of place the playing cards over the top of the roof to recreate this idea of, again, like a human object being repurposed. And then there is a smaller item kind of in the back that I haven't started in the video yet, but I will mention what that is once we go over there. What this upstairs area ends up being, since I didn't put a lot of bedrooms or things upstairs, I decided instead it was going to be like the general living area. So all of the bedrooms are downstairs. I did do an additional bathroom down there just so that it's really easy for playability. But then the 
these carts are the kitchen, the living room, some of the dressing rooms. There's two dressing rooms between these two carts where the different circus bugs can get ready and things like that more specifically than just like getting ready in their bedrooms. And then PT's bedroom is kind of upstairs as well, although it is crammed into one of the dressing rooms, which I do think is kind of on brand for the entire environment of it all. So it's kind of like a trailer. It's got this like entertainment showy circus element to it. And then we're going to be basically doing bug themed bedrooms, which I never thought I would say or do, but I just couldn't pass up the opportunity to do so once I realized that I could really give them more space and more theme. And you guys know I love a good themed bedroom. Like I absolutely love way back in Evergreen Harbor, the Toy Story bedrooms for all of the different toys and the themed rooms that I did for them. They're some of my favorite things I've ever done. Those bedrooms actually, I don't want to spoil anything and this is not set in stone yet, but I have been kind of hinting and talking with patrons that they might be getting restructured and some things might be getting changed around. So if you like those builds as well, I would recommend downloading them from the gallery now because they might not always exist in the future. And that's all I'm going to say about that for now, because I don't know my timeline and I don't know when I'm going to be maybe making some changes and taking on some side projects in regards to the save. Right now, we're just focused on good old Oasis Springs and this little neighborhood, which is all essentially going to be Bugs Life Builds, this little area. And I've already been really excited about like how it's turning out and all these lots that are kind of facing one another and how they feel so cohesive, even though they're themed very differently from one another. If you think about Bugs Life for a moment, and a lot of you have told me actually that you either haven't seen Bugs Life in a long time or you never saw it to begin with. I have to say I had to rewatch it when I decided that it was going to be such an important part of Oasis Springs and really really take notes to draw out some ideas and kind of just like get a good grasp on everything that I could possibly do with this movie. I wouldn't say it's one of my favorites. There are some moments in it that are really really funny and kind of speak to the time of Disney as well like back when Disney movies and Pixar in particular used to really sneak some jokes in there that you just can't say anymore. Not even like that you wouldn't say in normal society because those do exist as well. I don't know about in this movie in particular, but there's even some more like adult leaning jokes that are appropriate, but like not for a children's movie. And it's just a different time. It's kind of interesting to see and it's refreshing in a way. It's like, in my opinion, a stronger version of what Pixar used to be, like a time when it was a little bit more universally enjoyable by all ages. With that being said, on like a ranking of Pixar films, I would not put Bugs Life very high, but it's interesting to look at and it was an interesting time and the characters are kind of funny and interesting as well. There are some tropes that they use that again, I feel like they just don't do in kids media anymore. For those of you who said you have never seen it, I definitely recommend giving it a watch. It's not a long movie and the storyline is like very straightforward and it has some good moments. Just put it on in the background of you doing something else else and you'll enjoy it just as much as anything else, I would say. But then there were some of you that were so excited and said that this was like one of your favorite movies and you were really, really happy that I was going to be taking the time to put so much Bugs Life into the save, which I was just not expecting like at all. Really exciting though, because I'm always like hyped to hear that no one's going to be bored and people are going to be enjoying it regardless of how you feel about the movie. But thinking about Bugs Life and the scale of the characters and we're kind of like at toy size or smaller, they are actually so close in location between the different spots that they have in the movie, but it feels like they have to travel across the world to get to these different places. So it's kind of funny to see like Ant Island just across the way from this and think that of course a bug would think that is just such a long, crazy, dangerous path, but it is literally like a few hundred feet away and we have the bug circus. And then some of the other things that I'm going to be doing with the movie are also located very, very close to one another, but the bugs don't realize that in the film. My next video video will of course be the residential, the cast for this household. It is going to be quite a few sims. They actually do not fit into one household. So I'm going to be breaking them up into two households and I'll explain that a little bit better when we go downstairs and talk about the bedrooms. But there was really no way to include all of the characters and then I even thought about maybe 
unincluding some of the characters, which is one of my favorite things to do is like cut a character that doesn't really matter in my opinion or make sense. But in this instance, I decided that there was actually a way to just break them up into two that made a lot more sense. So that's what we're doing. And that means that this law can essentially be used in one of two ways. You can either keep it as a regular residential and then one of those households is gonna end up being a towny household. And that's probably how I'll have it for now because the other option is to do it as a residential rental. And then you'll have like your two rentals and the two different households, but they'll still all be on one lot together at least. Now this green box in the back of the lot, I wanna mention because it was shown in the movie. There are some characters that are getting ready for their performance at the circus. And in the background, you can kind of see that there is some sort of green tin that's almost turned on its side and appearingly like has some kind of mirror shoved into it. And you really can't tell what it's supposed to be, but because it was a tin, I thought of like a tin of mints. So even though I didn't put this on its side, I did it kind of open, almost Polly Pocket style. If you are an old, old watcher of mine, you'll remember back when I used to pretty much exclusively do Polly Pocket style builds. This is like my tribute to that. I turned it up and did it Polly Pocket style. And then the theming is that it's supposed to be a tin of mints. So I was going through the different stickers and wall decals that we have, trying to come up with what can I find and use, looking for candy pieces, logos that made sense. And I found these little teeth and they're probably from like the Tooth Fairy, I think high school years or growing together, one of those. And I said to my husband, do you think that this will translate well, like teeth, mints, maybe even some kind of like medical grade, if you will. And he said, yes, and I agree. So I put the little teeth stickers all over the place. And then I do find some little candy logos later on that are some of the newer items we have. And I pop those on as well. And some confetti and things to kind of decorate. Now I made that a bathroom and that's gonna be a bathroom with an asterisk. I would say subject to change. I'm always a little bit wary about doing those like outdoor bathrooms. And you might even be thinking, well, why did you even pick that as a bathroom? And it's really just because of the mint theming. I thought mint, toothpaste, toothbrush, bathroom. That was my correlation. So I did it as like an outdoor bathroom area, but I always have to play test those because you have to see how much Sims are going to freak out and how much they consider the space to actually just be enclosed or how annoyed they get with each other when trying to like use those. I've done it in gyms before with like outdoor showers and more like exposed bathroom items like that. And it doesn't always work out, but that's probably the one version that I've done so far that I would say is the most open. So I'm gonna play test that and if it doesn't work out, I will probably turn it into some kind of a patio dining area, some outdoor eating place. I could also do it as another dressing room. I have two on the lot upstairs that we'll be doing at the end of the video. Or if you guys have any better ideas, let me know what else you think I could do with it or what you would like to see. Or I'll just keep it as a bathroom if it functions, to be honest with you, because I think it's funny. Now moving downstairs, we have my bug bedrooms. To keep this kind of simple, I kept most of these rooms perfectly square, which I know I could have gone with like hexagons and it probably would have been more buggy, but I really just wanted the simplicity of being able to decorate decorate these spaces and not have to worry about the walls and really do with them what I truly wanted. So most of them are just perfect squares kind of stacked right next to one another. It also gives this synthetic feel or like this pop-up feel of like it's a temporary bedroom that gets moved or a temporary tent, temporary space. You get the idea. The first one we're starting with, hopefully all of them are going to be obvious, but this is Heimlich. He is the green caterpillar that has a few lines mentioning that he just wants to be a butterfly. And what I did with all of these rooms, that I actually ended up going back to the Ant Island build to add in some things as well. I researched each one of these bugs or insects, and I'm gonna use both of the words fluently and frequently throughout this video and probably incorrectly, so please no one get frustrated, but we'll just call them bugs most of the time. I researched all of these bugs and tried to figure out different things about them that made sense for their living environment that I was able to translate over. So things like, where in the world do they live? What kind of lighting do they like? Do they like sticks? Do they like rocks? Do they like logs? Is there anything about how the bugs act or personality wise or any interesting facts about them that coordinate over to their living environment that I'm able to bring in? Because if we're honest with ourselves, although there is kind of a larger cast of characters for Bugs Life, a lot of these characters don't have a ton of speaking lines and then therefore not a lot of personality is shown. So I'm not able to bring in like a ton of hobby based objects, although I do later on in the video with some of the other characters bring in some things
things that I think make sense. At the end of the day, I basically have how the character looks to go off of for their room. So I thought the next best thing was to actually just research the bug itself. So for Heimlich's room, a couple of little details. Obviously the butterflies and wanting to transform. He has the cocoon, if you will, and the netting around the bed, kind of like forming a chrysalis and the transformation process. It's very, very green with little pops of red here and there. And then it's actually got glass on all sides of it because it's supposed to be like one of those caterpillar houses that you can keep. Those ones that you'll like stick rocks and sticks and leaves in and kind of like crisscross them around, especially when you're younger to keep bugs in. It's supposed to be sort of representative of one of those. And each of the bugs, I kind of did like a cost analysis of how likely it was that people keep them as pets or their houses therefore look a little bit more organic or not. So right across the way, for example, we have Francis, the ladybug, and he has a very nature-based bedroom. Of course, people keep ladybugs, but I really caught on to two key factors when I was researching ladybugs. One, they really love living underneath rocks. So I liked using like the rock wallpaper and some of the rock flooring in his room. And then I also liked this detail that I found that apparently ladybugs will sometimes sleep in piles for warmth, which is why I have like an overabundant ladybug theming in the room. But I also put those little piles of balloons down around kind of as like piles of ladybugs. One thing about Francis's character that we do know is he has, and I like hesitate to say this, but there's like a slight hint of narcissism. He's a little bit grumpy. He's a little bit of like a snooty character. So I thought that theming his room very heavily on what he was and like doing a lot of red and a lot of little ladybugs around made sense in a way. I recreated a ladybug carpet in his room and it looks fine, but I do find one in the catalog later on that I go into that room and replace it with that's an actual ladybug shape. And it's always gonna be a little bit annoying to me that when I try to, like you truly have to remember every single thing that's in the catalog on your own and just remember that it's there because if you search ladybug in the little search bar, you're not gonna get all of the ladybug items. You have to just know that they're there. So when I sorted later by red, for example, I was able to find the carpet and then it was an item that hadn't come up previously when I just searched ladybug. I think the key phrases and words and like the search engine could work a little bit better in this game, but it's never gonna happen, so I digress. This is also the clown quarter, if you will. This is where all of the clowns of the circus live in this wing of like underground housing. And then the one that is in the far corner next to Heimlich's bedroom, that is gonna end up being a bathroom so that you do not have to go all the way upstairs and use my outdoor bathroom if you do not want to which means that this last bedroom is for Slim. He is a stick bug, which is incredibly difficult theming. I decided to go a little bit more organic and nature-based. I liked the camouflage aspect, of course. So I found these like, I don't even know how, how to describe them. They're like the ombre wall sculpture items that kind of fade from one color of brown to the other. I liked how it kind of blended in with the dirt wall and it gave like that scaly camouflage aspect. Some of the bug theming gonna be a little bit repetitive, although I tried to really make each space stand out and be very different from one another but at the end of the day each bug has like they like leaves they like rocks they like sticks so there is gonna be some carryover between them but of course for a stick bug they tend to live like amongst the leaves or under them if you will like blending in with the sticks so I use these objects that look like giant leaves and kind of like put his bed underneath and put his chair underneath so he has a place to hide and then drawing in the hobby based objects of course we have to use the woodworking table in his room. That's what makes sense. He's a stick bug. The bathroom across from his room is actually really cute. I've been trying to step it up a little bit in terms of doing some things with bathrooms that are more interesting, more detailed. Been watching some tutorials on TikTok to get some little ideas just to freshen things up so I don't always make like the same basic bathroom. I have like a very repetitive nature in terms of using certain objects and I'm trying to break that a little bit, make something kind of interesting. I didn't show it in the video today, but you'll see it in the download of the speed build or maybe in the screenshots. I'm not sure if it's included either. If you walk further down the path of my underground bug bedroom area, we have the second wing, which is the remaining four bedrooms. The Some of these bugs are gonna share spaces. So this one is actually for Rosie. She 
is a Black Widow spider and she has more of a human man-made style bedroom because as we all know and unfortunate for me, bugs like Rosie like to live in your house. Particularly the dark, the cooler, the hidden away, your attic where you might keep some things that are not going to easily get disturbed or touched, a garage. So I wanted to create like a little abandoned attic with some older furniture, some cobwebs, a darker space that's got like unnatural lighting, some glowing objects, something that's more her, definitely. She's kind of a really bubbly, lively character and she's definitely more mother-like and like not your typical like spider personality if you could think of one. But just because somebody is like that doesn't mean that their bedroom might not look like this. And that's my argument for that. Luckily for me, we have like the spooky stuff pack, vampires that comes with all the cobwebs. And I was able to find, I think from seasons, there is some like Halloween style items that have cobwebs on them, a cobweb carpet. There's also the basement kit or whatever it is that has like all the broken furniture, the older furniture with dust and cracks and stuff on it. Really, really works for this space. I decided to go with the canopy over the bed, kind of like netting and webbing. Again, like more of a space that she might be comfortable in but I also tucked in some more cobweb details into the bed and like around the netting as well and then I really was like trying to recreate a spider with carpets on the floor kind of like how I did over in Francis's room but it looked awful so I ultimately end up replacing it actually I'm gonna come back to her room a few times and like add little things here and there because she just didn't have quite enough like it didn't feel themed enough in my opinion so we'll pop in here a few more times just to add some more things and glowing and candles and stuff now if you ask me and I'm sorry to say it because people are probably gonna get mad at me, but I am absolutely petrified of spiders. It is actually a fear that I have had since childhood, but it gets worse every year that I am older. And I have to say, one of the worst things about living where I do in London, and you would never expect this to be a problem, because I know most of you are like picturing London and you're like, this just isn't an issue. And I promise you, I live on the outskirts of London near the woods and it is the biggest issue. I have spiders in my house constantly all year long and they love me. They find me, they hunt me down, they touch me. I have never had so many spiders find me and crawl on me as I have living in this house. And it's truly become such an issue because I'm, I'm just so terrified, you guys. Like I will sob panic attacks, crying. My husband knows I am so scared of them that I had him like mandatory. We had to install some kind of screen on our bedroom window this summer because I just couldn't fathom the idea of having another season of spiders in my bedroom. And it's worked for the most part. Like I've been pretty good. Like I haven't seen as many as in years past. Last summer, I had one crawl right across my face, which is pretty much my worst fear other than them like literally biting me. But unfortunately, right before my Disney trip, like a couple of days before, I did have an incident with a spider, a very large one crawling up my arm while I was laying in bed. And I did have a panic attack. So there's that. And I know I'm saying that and you're like, that's irrational. I know. It is an irrational fear. It is really bad. I am actually panicking and I should probably get some kind of help for it, but you know, it's on like the list of to do. I know they're good. I know they eat other things. I know that like they're nice to have in your home. I know you don't have to leave the comments. I understand. I have an irrational fear of them. There is literally nothing you could say that would make me go, oh, love the spider, love having it in my house. I don't want to see it. I don't like it. Nothing will make me act crazier faster than seeing one or having one touch me or cause like an instantaneous panic attack on my part. And so we have the next two bugs. Now this is going to get a little bit complicated for a few reasons. There are two bugs that are going to be living in this room. They are the married couple of the bug circus. One of them is a praying mantis named Manny. The other one is a moth and she has a name that I am not going to be using because it can be considered derogatory and I just don't want to have it in the save. I think that it's again it's one of those things that like Disney probably wouldn't do nowadays, but I don't know that for sure. It's also other people's names, like you can find it in media. It probably would be okay for me to use it, but I'm going to err on the side of caution and just say no, because people do consider it derogatory. So for that reason, I'm just gonna skip it. I'm renaming her. You can Google what her name is, but I'm gonna be calling her Gemma from this point forward. That is her name, Gemma the Moth. 
Her and her husband, Manny, are married, according to Disney Wiki, and they are kind of like a hippy-dippy couple in the best way possible. I can picture color, maybe some of the bubble machines, if you catch my vibe. There are, like, peak vowel patterns on the moth's feathering and on her wings and stuff like that, and I think they would just be, like, a cool, really hip, like, 70s, 80s style couple, and for that reason, there are two beds in here, but I think that they would be one of those you ever see in the like comes from TikTok, but there's like this new age thing of people buying houses if you're married and kind of having your own rooms and doing this vibe where it's like I get my room and I get to decorate and he gets his room and he gets to decorate and then we have sleepovers in each other's rooms. Like married, love each other, sleep in the same bed sometimes, maybe not, I'm not judging, but they have their own spaces and places to retreat to and it's new age, it's fun, it allows more like creativity and more personal space as well, which is always good and healthy. So I thought even though they were married and they're sharing a room, it would be kind of fun if they each had their own bed. So Manny's bed, of course, is the green one that's tucked in the corner. He gets some green flowery wallpaper over there and it gives the total like praying mantis vibe. And then she's a moth. So again, the idea of like netting and clothing. And when I think of moths, I do think of like lanterns and like eating your clothes and coming in your house and just loving clothes. So I thought that she would love the fabric. And I also thought that she would have have like a little collection of lanterns and that would be like something she loves and she is really interested in. So she has all of those on her side of the room kind of like lining the bookcase. Now the actual design of her bed is based on her character. So she has more of like a blue and purple look on the inside of her wings but the outside back part is more of this like deep red color. So it's based on how she physically looks. I ended up extending their bedroom outside of the typical square that I had done with the other spaces because I realized that they had a lot of hobby based things that were going to take up more tiles that they really just needed to have. One thing for sure is that Manny is supposed to be I think some kind of a psychic and probably not a very good one. Like one of the things that the other bug characters kind of comment is that he's maybe a fake psychic or just like I don't know one of those people that thinks that they're psychic but they're actually not. So I'm planning on making him a medium but like with a very very low skill level and I wanted the seance table to be in here so so he could do those readings. I also did one upstairs in the dressing rooms so that you could bring people in for like private readings. But he has to have a place to practice and I think all of the things that go along with that, the like spiritual nature, the stars, the moon, the colorfulness of the room kind of like lean into his character and really makes sense why the two of them end up together if you think about it. I also really wanted the bubble blower in here for obvious reasons. And then for Gemma, she is seen in the film kind of like doing her hair, makeup, getting ready. She is the magician's assistant. So she has to have her own little vanity and the makeup and all that places to get ready with like the butterfly lighting more in the dressing room-esque category. It was a lot easier to decide like some things about their characters because of even though we don't get a lot of lines we definitely get to know their vibe. I think they would read. I think they would be a little bit spiritual. I think that they would do tarot and astrology. I think they would be a lot of fun and like new age as well and very progressive. So I wanted all of that in their little space and at the end of the day that box just wasn't going to cut it so they got the biggest room. Makes a lot of sense because we're cramming two sims into here with two separate beds and I wanted the full size bed for reasons that I will not state on YouTube but you can probably guess. <laughs> they get a space that ends up being a little bit more man-made looking and less leaning on the nature aspect. There are some things in their room like I tried to do the flower lighting and the flower windows and some of the greenery especially on Manny's side of the bedroom. But at the end of the day, I would say out of all of the bugs here, I feel like praying mantis are the one that are very routinely kept as pets. Stick bugs are also kept as pets, but I have just seen it more frequently, I would say that it's more common. So I felt better doing something a little bit less organic for them. And of course their space ends up being my favorite because it's so colorful and fun and I really, really thought about their characters and had a lot of fun with it. Let me know what your favorite is so far or at the end of the video, definitely let me know what your favorite bug bedroom is. Now for Dim, he is a rhinoceros beetle, which the only like interesting thing I could find about them is that they can lift so much above their own weight to a ridiculous amount. And I had read a fact and I don't even want to like restate it because I'm worried that it's going to be wrong, but it was something like the amount of weight that a rhinoceros beetle can lift is the equivalent of a human being able to lift a car over their head. Like they're crazy. And so the only thing I could really think of is other than the fact that 
that he's a really big bulky character and a lot of the other bugs literally ride on him because he's almost like vehicle size was that strength equals working out and exercising so I had to put some kind of gym equipment in here but I didn't think that he would be like a gym rat so I could have gone full athletic gym rat with the room but he doesn't give that vibe at all he's actually kind of like gentle giant so I wanted to put something in here so that he can exercise and work out and like be strong buff dude but not crazy it's not his whole personality and then he also has a fireplace because they really like warm climates this bed that I've used in Dim's room as well as in Francis's room is newer. It's from Lovestruck. I was really excited about the simplicity of it and I also really liked the curved lines. There are certain objects that like when I'm going through the catalog and I'm looking at everything, I just feel like based on how they're shaped and how they're curved or not that they fit certain characters. Like all the way back in Heimlich's room, there's a chair in there that has a lot of padding and the ribbed pattern that's on it looks very similar to his character design. So usually, I know that this is crazy, but one of the reasons that it takes me so long to do anything for the save file is that I am literally thinking about how each furniture piece looks and seeing if it like thematically goes with the character. Not just in time period and personality, but like physically how the character looks is usually how I'm basing what their actual furniture items are. I can't do that with everything, but think about like Dreamlight Valley. They do this a lot, especially if you're doing the new pass with Tiana and they've got the tables and the chairs and like how the tables are themed after her dress and some of the clothing is like very much based off of leaves and it looks like just so a part of the aesthetic of the movie and of her character in general. That's kind of what I'm trying to recreate, but without the ability to actually make my own objects and being limited to what's physically in the game. For the last bedroom down here, we have, oh my god, I can't even remember remember their names. Tuck and Roll. That took me a second. Tuck and Roll. They are little... what would I call these? I would call these pill bugs. They have other names and I'm sure someone will let me know. They're roly polies as well. It's like something I've heard them called and definitely called them that as a child. They are actually cannonballs for the circus and kind of like stunt performers as well. So I wanted to sneak a little cannon into their bedroom. But other than that, their room was particularly interesting and difficult to do. They are actually the two sims that are going to be cut from the household. So all of the other characters up until this point, we've got, let's see if I can do it, Heimlich, Francis, Slim, Dim, Rosie, Gemma, Manny, and PT are going to make up the main household. And then these two, Tuck and Roll, are going to be cut into their own. So they'll either be townies, if you do this as a regular residential, or they will be a second household if this is going to be a rental residential for you. I thought it made the most sense to cut them up that way because these two characters are essentially like so similar. They're going to be twins. They're basically like the same thing. They aesthetically look almost identical. There's very, very few differences about them in terms of like what they actually look like. And they are the ones that don't technically get very many speaking lines because apparently they're speaking Hungarian in the movie. They don't get a ton of speaking lines in the movie and therefore you can't get a lot about their personality. You know that they're a little bit goofy, that they're constantly kind of like hitting each other or attacking one another. And we know that they serve as cannonballs specifically in the circus act. So their room ended up being really simple, very like twin-like with duplicate items, one for each one. Bunk beds makes a lot of sense for them, I think. And I also did like the simplicity of their room. I don't think that they needed a lot of clutter. I think that they would be a little destructive. I thought maybe they would like paint or like throwing paint. I also thought they would like fireworks quite a bit. So I kind of tucked some of that stuff into their room. Oh, and then I also put marbles in their room because rolling circles, you get it. Now, for the upstairs and kind of the end of the video, we'll be doing the two carts. Like I mentioned earlier, these are going to be a couple of dressing rooms. The main dressing room is tucked into PT's room and kind of serves as a dual purpose room. One, because this is a very tight space. Two, because I think he's a little bit of a control freak and probably would have characters get ready very close to his room and kind of keep track of what they're doing and just like, I don't know, control people. Like they like to have their office and your office like really close together. There's also a living room up here. There is a kitchen. It's very small. There's a couple of little extra sleeping arrangements if you wanted, I don't know, like additional characters or I just thought that maybe some of the characters would sleep up here from time to time. And then the larger dressing room with the seance table for Manny that I had mentioned is also going to be in the other cart. In Disney World news, I just got back about a week ago. I had such a good time. It was so hot, like incredibly hot and I'm not going to go on and on about it, but I promise you in my entire life, 
life. I will never go back to Florida in the summer ever again because it was so unbearably hot and I don't know how anybody lives there, truly. Like if you're from Florida, you live there. How do you do it? How do you survive the Florida heat in the summer? Because it's, it's aggravating and it's also like makes you slow. You don't get as much done. There's not as much like ambition to do things. Like there was so much more time where I wanted to be in the hotel or in the pool, which is not usual for me. I'm very much like a park girly. I want to be out and doing rides and like there all the time. And I love a long day at the parks, but not this time. I was happy to like sit at the hotel and nap and maybe I'm just getting older. I don't know. I got to ride Tiana's Bayou Adventure. I almost didn't. And I am so inspired to go back to Princess and the Frog. And I know I've done like a lot of that, but they show Tiana's house in the ride. And I'm really, really inspired to go back and change my version of her house and make it more like the one that I guess is more canon. They also show in like the walkthrough of the ride Tiana's last name, which is cool because I'll be able to update it in the save and give her like a proper last name. I believe it's Rogers, but somebody correct me if that's wrong. I had picked Rose for her, so I'm going to be making some changes. And then they also show some other characters, which I assume are going to be coming up in this supposed Tiana animated TV show that they are or were supposed to be doing. Who knows if that's still happening, but there are some details and cool things in the ride and things that I think I'll be able to use to fix and spruce up and also just like completely redo some of my Princess and the Frog stuff. I don't know when I'll get to actually doing any of that, but it's now very, very much on my mental to-do list. I did not ride Tron because I was really concerned that it was going to make me sick. It was the first time that I have been there since Tron opened and I kind of regret it now because they took away the virtual queue. I didn't get a chance to do it before they did that. I think I would have been okay, but I didn't want to take the risk with the heat and I don't know. There was just something about it. I wasn't feeling well and right about it. I just opted out. I ate so much food. That was my number one priority when being in the parks. One, because I love the park food and there's so many like favorites of mine, but being back in America, I have to say, living in England, there's one thing that I am constantly on about and it is the food. I'm not a fan of the food here. I could go on and on about it, but I was so excited to be back in the US and just get my favorites and my goodies and my snacks and then also be able to indulge in some of my park favorites as well. I met a bunch of characters. I met like pretty much all of the Disney princesses this trip because I was having them sign a pair of ears for me which I was really excited about. I wanted all of the princess signatures that I could possibly get on one pair of ears. And I got like a lot of them. I'm gonna be making a TikTok about it, showing everything. I had some really fun interactions and some like specific ones that were just a lot of fun. So if you're not already following me on TikTok, do that because it's gonna be some interesting stuff and I had a blast with it. I also bought so much stuff. I'm making a haul video for TikTok and it was literally like 10 minutes long and I thought that I got everything Thing. And then after I was done filming the TikTok, I realized that I have way more stuff that I had just forgotten because I had already kind of placed it into my home or it was closed and it was in the laundry. Way too much stuff purchased. But I will say I probably will not be going back to either Disneyland Paris or Disney World in Florida for a while because I have done both of those parks four times between the four of them a lot in the past like two to five years. Enough that I feel like I don't need to do it for a little while. The next one on my list is Tokyo Disney. That would be like the goal, the dream. I would be so excited to do that. I think my husband is also on board, but we will see. I'll definitely let you guys know when and if I have the next trip planned. Just for the sake of time, I'm not going to be including too much of the other cart in today's video just because it's a kitchen that I don't feel like anything too interesting was done with and then a dressing room that's very similarly designed to the one that is in PT space. And that is basically going to be the end of today's Today's video, let me know what you thought of PT Flea's circus in the comment section down below and take guesses for what you think is next. It is a commercial Bugs Life Law. That'll be my hint for you guys. If you would like to support the Disney Save on Patreon, you can do so by clicking the link in my description box down below or the one at the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching and I will talk to you all in the next one.